So here we are for a special chick flick edition. Today's movie, Letters to Juliet. We're gonna watch the movie and review it for you and let you know is it worth it or is it not. Expect to love this movie, fall in love with the movie. It's gonna be great. I'm pumped to see this movie. I've been looking forward to it for a really, really, really long time and so I really am, I'm hoping for a lot. I'm a little bit of a cynic when it comes to romantic comedies. However, I love the classics. I love Meg Ryan. Maybe this will be a new classic. I am really looking forward to this. Gary Winnick, I love Vanessa Redgrave. I am so psyched for this. What can I say? The trailer makes me cry. So this is gonna be great. I'm very excited. I have to just come out and say that this movie, Letters to Juliet, is the exact type of movie that I will direct when I direct features. I absolutely loved almost everything about it. It will end up going in my top 10 movies of all time. And I will say there was not a moment that I was not crying. Because even when I was laughing and smiling, I had tears in my eyes. Yeah, I cried throughout the whole thing. The whole thing. But it wasn't, it wasn't sad stuff. It was, it was the love because it was just so touching and like there was there was love everywhere in this movie but the scene with the brush oh god i was oh, i no. was, I was like, that reminded me of my mom she <laughs> always brushed her hair and i'm like oh okay they had to throw that in there <laughs> it was oh my god well and then too like on top of that like you know here's um amanda's character has lost her mother at nine so you know she's never had this moment uh, before and so you knew it was coming you know we can't we'll talk about yeah. the predictability but like you knew that Vanessa was going to go over and brush her hair. But you wanted her to do it. And you didn't cry. I feel a little bad that I didn't cry, but I did get teary. It, it was love. It, it, it was joy. No, no, no sadness. It, 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 was, yeah. it was just beautiful. For me personally, it had everything that yes. I loved. You know, it had great fashion. It was lots of Italian food, Italian people in Italy. And there's just one of the best, how do I say it? I think it was, I loved The Notebook, but for me, this was more realistic. It was believable, and you know, you probably can film it as a documentary. It was that yeah. true. It was really I, I think yeah. that, that was the key point for me, that it was very, very believable. I mean, it still had its, I mean, him riding up literally on a white horse. Yeah. yeah. It had its, you know, quote unquote cheesy romance movie moments, but it wasn't cheesy. They did it in such a way that it was still brilliant. Well, there was an element of of predictability, and this ties in with the trailer, because like, I remember we talked about the trailer when we saw it before whatever we saw, and it was like, oh, well, now we know the whole story. Great, thanks for giving it away. but. The movie itself kind of gave the story away as you went, but that wasn't the point. It was about the journey of getting there and about the relationships that were developed. Like the director knew we knew that it was going to be predictable, so he did really important things with the shots. Like he yeah. moved in really slow as she was getting out of the car. You know, there was things that were just like, he would build the moments yeah. so we were on the journey. The movie's little nods to accepting that it was a romantic comedy were great yeah. too. The little lines like, oh, this is so predictable. Of course that just happened, were great. And the even the, the fact that the boy she was engaged to at the beginning, he was, we all we were saying before that he some of us could see that being our perfect guy he was he was perfect enough in the beginning at least that it, it wasn't so clear-cut that she shouldn't be with him I always enjoy Amanda Siegfried like in general like all her characters I always kind of like I felt that this was one of my favorite roles she's ever done the whole time she was just you know right there I was with her she was emotional at the right moments she would help hold back tears at the right <laughs> moments you know she was curious and interesting I think and her I commitment was, was great to the character uh, but I just think that the character was um, not as not as not that quirky not that original or unique. I mean, it, ser it served the story and it was the right character for the story, but I feel like I've seen it in a lot of movies that I see. It's also just the role that she, she's been playing oh, often. Yeah. That's I mean, her She role. always plays kind of the same role, but she does it so well. I mean, she's she definitely really found well. her niche. I mean, comedians like Seth Rogen always play the same character. Right. We don't get on them about it because they're a comedian. Yeah. She's found her niche and she does it well. Right. A little My bit. only concern about her character is the stakes. The stakes weren't yeah. high enough in part. What's always frustrating for me though is when I see a film that I love with the role I'd love to play. It's like, damn it! Now I can't! It's been done! Be more 
romantic comedies out there though. But it's we'll like, it's good. Am I gonna go to fly to Tuscany to film it? Am I gonna shove well, my you know, face it gives, in Tuscan it, food it, all it gives day? Hope to actresses like me that in 20 years <laughs> I could actually have so some, can, some some good roles still. You know yeah. what I mean? The one that was most the relationship that was most fulfilling to me was the one between the grandmother and the girl. Yeah. Because I thought that was the most developed, and it it was so rich, and it was so real. It wasn't a cliche thing, and it was necessary. And I just I love that got me. I loved it. At the crux of the film, you got to talk about Vanessa, Vanessa Redgrave. I mean, mm -hmm. she was just Amazing. so good. I felt for her. I was on that journey with her, and it it was very reminiscent of her role as Julia, which she won the Academy Award with. You know, she has an old Hollywood vibe to her. You know, she's just a real actress through and through, but in the subtle ways. And I, you know, the best actors always yeah. are. The whole role was great that that role even existed because yeah. it's not often that you see an actress that age doing something really incredible and being an equal part of the film. She wasn't just the, the grandmother figure meant to inspire she love. Was she did the, all that, but she was also just the, the highlight of the film. Gary Winnick's really good with taking something that's predictable and, and making that unique twist. I think that's the one thing the film lacked was a twist. There was no moment where you really were, th you know, thrown for a loop because it did follow the, you know, the guidelines of a romantic movie, but still kept my interest the entire time and I just loved every part of the film. I fell in love with the country which I think was actually played a really big role in this film because they were finding love in this beautiful atmosphere and they were falling in love with people that loved that place. You know, Lorenzo loved the earth, loved the food. It was the culture. I'm, I'm very city girl. Like, New York City is the place to be for me. I live in LA, I have to make movies. But when I was watching, and I was watching those beautiful countrysides and how peaceful it was and all of the great food and I was just like, I seriously could live One there. Of those movies that makes you want to stop your life and go live that life. Yes. <laughs> I think the, the, the reason for that is because our life as America and love stories usually in America are go, 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 fast paced. Where this, because the culture there is slower and it's all about loving your family and loving life and not how much you make or you know necessarily what you look like. It's about who you love, where you love it, and enjoying it, which may, which I think set the perfect base for this love story. I think this movie is a hopeless romantics dream movie. Oh yeah. I think yeah. if you're a hopeless romantic and you love movies about romance at all, you have to see this okay. movie. Yes, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I'm not so sure that it's gonna end up a classic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that this is gonna be something in like 15, 20 years that people are gonna be like, oh, Letters to Juliet. Like, I don't see that happening. If you wanna cry, go, go see it. Spend the money, go see this movie. It's very, very romantic, yes. Go, you will cry. And it's even a, um, a movie that my husband would like. I would say run, don't walk. It's a movie theater. Right now, as soon as you're done watching this, I mean literally sprint your ass to the movie theater. You'll love it. I am probably the most cynical one here, but I did, I, re I really liked it. And I think even just anyone who likes any romantic comedies would really like this movie. I think it's obvious that I'm gonna say go see it. This movie is beautiful and I cried so much and I, I will actually probably go see it again. So many parts of this movie that I wanted to know more about, that I wanted maybe a spin-off or like I want I want to see more of. Like I want to see more of these women that write these letters. Mm -hmm. I wanted their story and I want this this whole story about the letters to Juliet. Like I want to know more about just these this whole phenomenon that people go and it's true. It's true. I think it means we need to take a trip. <laughs> <laughs>